Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 7. The Lord of Skull Spiders. Hello, this is Hanat here, and welcome to the final day of Bionicle Week, and today we'll be taking a look at the Lord of Skull Spiders. Now, he is by himself, basically. Uh, each Toa had a matching protector. The Lord of Skull Spiders is by himself, outside of the, you know, 12 Skull Spiders that came in the other sets. He is the only villain-themed set. He is the only one that doesn't come with a regular Skull Spider. Um, he has this really cool packaging. As you see, he comes with the gold Skull Spider mask, which we'll get into. And you can see the Lord of Skull Spiders here. He's 145 pieces, so despite being, not being a Toa, not being a humanoid, he has the most parts out of all of the sets. And at 15 bucks for 145 pieces, that's a pretty good deal, I must say. Anyways, he looks really cool. Um, now, the thing about him is that he is not humanoid, therefore they built in a gimmick. He has a gear gimmick, it's just a, a little bit of everything he does is kind of one feature. Um, but, I think it's time to decide, is the Lord of Skull Spiders cool? By actually looking at the Lord of Skull Spiders and not just his box and promotional images. Because people have been judging him based on that instead of the actual figure. So here we have the Lord of Skull Spiders, and I gotta say, I like this guy. He's not my favorite of the new sets. Um, he is different, for one, but I like this guy. He's a big spider. He's super cool looking. Um, he isn't very poseable. We'll get into poseability right away. Uh, you can move each of his legs in a ball joint, but if you move too many of them, he falls over. And his mouth can open here, which you can see has two spider fangs that do open. Um, and this is a printed decal on his face there. Um, it is not a sticker, but other than that, he has no other articulation. This guy is cool because of the things he can do with other things. First of all, I do want to get this comparison out of the way. Last time we had a full-size spider sets from Bionicle was with the Vizorak. It was the Vizorak. Um, and I gotta say, I like these six legs more than just the four. Um, and he, as you can, so now I'm just comparing two giant spiders because I don't want to make this guy's review too short, but he doesn't do as much as the others, unfortunately. So, moving that Vizorak out of the way, what this guy does is pretty neat. Uh, first of all, he is mostly black. He looks like a black widow, almost. I love the use of orange. And out of all the builds, he was the most interesting, because he's unlike the other sets. The other 12 kind of build the same. Leg, leg, arm, arm, torso, mask. This guy is a lot more. In fact, I thought I was building him upside down, until I realized you're actually building him upside down um, and then flipping it around. It was a really neat reversal. But other than that, his details are very nice. He's got this nice face. Um, it's interesting he still uses the front chest part and the torso piece uh, despite not having a, a real torso. Actually, it is kind of on his torso um, for a spider. And he does have this complicated gear system with rubber bands. Yay, rubber bands. That Vizorak I just showed you had broken rubber bands. So, yeah, hopefully these are sturdy, like the ones on my Bow Rock or my Exotoa, um, which, you know, are still intact. Anyways, he does have this gimmick here. Now, this gimmick is you pull this little lever, and his legs pull in. Now, this doesn't seem like the most exciting thing on its own, and it really isn't. Um, they do that. But if you have a protector, death to the protector. Um, it's kind of neat, he can kind of just like grab a protector and carry him off into his web. Um, I think that's super cool. And so do the designers, because the comic he includes in his instruction manual shows him taking Protector of Fire, or, or maybe just a Fire Villager, I don't think it's actually a Protector of Fire. Um, finding the mask, Protector tries to take mask, wrapping up Protector in the web. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I like Lord of Skull Spiders for... I like his gimmick, because it's kind of fun. Uh, it's not practical. It, it's just, you can kind of take... No, but nobody larger than a protector can he pick up. But he can actually pick up and hold a protector if you get it angled right. So that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, though, you can pose his front two 
uh, claws without having too many issues of his legs uh, falling. With him falling, um, he does kind of plop and bounce a little bit, so he does have a bouncing action. Um, and that's about it. I mean, not much else to him. He can, you know, see there's a skull spider in comparison. He's just a big spider, and if you don't like big spiders, then this guy's not for you, um, unfortunately. But he does come with something cool, and that is the gold skull spider mask. What purpose this has, I have no idea. I just know he snatches it away in the, the CGI trailer, and it's got some kind of importance that they haven't revealed yet. So, fortunately at this time, I do not know what this does. But, all I know is that it's kind of cool. You can stick it on guys. Um, you can have them possess, like... Protector of Fire with the gold Skull Spider mask. Or you can mutilate another Skull Spider, like these uh, green ones I don't like the color of, and just snap legs onto it, and now you've got a gold Skull Spider. You should have gold legs, I think, but... Yeah, uh, not really sure what to do with it yet. That's unfortunate, is that even with the mini story guide that was included with the LEGO magazine, uh, you know, this, this big thing here. Uh, it doesn't really talk about what the Gold Skull Spider Mask does. It's just kind of a thing that exists. Um, it's not the Mask of Creation or anything, or the Ultimate Power or Control or anything like that. Any of the important masks we know about. So for now, just leave it right there. Um, it's got a nice little spot. It's, it's unofficial, but there's like a nice little gap there that holds the mask really well. Um, and that's pretty much Lord of Skull Spiders. Unfortunately, he's not super interesting on his own. Uh, when you have a legion of skull spiders, on the other hand, he looks really cool leading a horde of spiders. Uh, if I make too many more legion of spiders jokes, someone's going to send me a nostalgia critic clip. Anyways, the thing is, he looks cool when you've got, you know, all 12 skull spiders from buying all 12 other sets. Um, he just kind of adds to that. He's a good villain figure piece, but and he's an interesting build. But as a figure, he's kind of rocky. Um, I like him for his uniqueness. I like him for his gimmick of being able to eat protectors that have insufficient articulation. Don't necessarily like him as the only villain we've got. Um, I know more villains are coming uh, in the second wave that has been confirmed. But, uh, yeah, on his own, he is kind of, as a set on his own, without, like, these 12 skull spiders surrounding him, making him look more impressive. He is kind of... Eh. Like, I, I like the design, but as a reviewer, I must give the honest opinion that if he was the only Bionicle on the shelf, I probably wouldn't buy him. Um, he's not too interesting on his own. He's more interesting when you got other stuff for him to work with. And currently, the gold, gold skull spider mask does not have a good story purpose to justify getting him for that. So, you get him if you want to collect the line, if you want a good villain, if you want to have a giant spider. I mean, spiders are cool. So, that's it, guys. 13 sets. All of the 2015 Bionicles that we know about are out, and I have reviewed them the last seven days. So, let's take a look at the line as a whole. The Protectors are six neat little figures. While I prefer Earth, Jungle, and Stone to the rest of them, I gotta say, they are all neat in their own ways. Um, they're not totally necessary to a collection. They're kind of like the Turag and Matoran figures of the olden days, where if you had them, they make a cool addition to the line, but not totally necessary. And their combination modes aren't too drastic. Um, so, it's up to you, really. If you're a hardcore Bionicle fan and want everything, by all means, you will not be disappointed with these. But if you're a casual Lego person just looking for cool robots, pick up, you know, Master uh, Protector of Jungle there, because he's a neat little robot figure for ten bucks. The six Toa are absolutely fantastic. This is the original six Toa, updated, revamped for the modern day, using all the things Lego has learned in the past 14 years. And they have made fantastic action figures. Bionicles of the past were fun building toys that also turned into action figures in the end. But their articulation was somewhat limited, sometimes bogged down by gimmicks. And they weren't stellar action figures, but they were cool. These are great building toys that are fun to build and are fantastic action figures. 
They have multiple posing options. It also helps that they have the dual weapon functionality that the Terra Nuva had. But they are just great. They managed to work the gear system in, in addition to being able to have shoulder articulation, and they all are about the same height. Uh, they are nicely scaled together, as you can see. Um, I gotta say, I am super impressed with this line, mostly because of these six Toa. They worked really hard to make these the best of this first wave. And I can wholeheartedly recommend all six of these to both Bionicle fans, people who liked Bionicle in the past, and also fans of robotic action figures. These guys are fantastic. So here we are at the end of Bionicle Week. Over the last seven days I've covered 13 sets and I must say I am super impressed with this first outing of the new Bionicle line. After the cancellation of the line back in 2010, I did not purchase Legos for several years until they started doing LEGO DC Superheroes and those brought back in a little bit. But I am glad that Bionicle has returned. Uh, while Hero Factory may have had some good concepts and interesting figures, it did not have the story and characters behind it that Bionicle did. And it seems like LEGO realized that and are bringing us back Bionicle. Now whether this is a reboot or some weird alternate timeline or whatever it may be, as the story unfolds, um, I am so looking forward to what has to come from this line and from this company. So thank you, Lego, for bringing Bionicle back because it, it's been five years, and honestly, I've missed the line. It, it jumping from the end of Glitorian to uh, the beginning of 2015's Bionicles. It's a huge leap in improvement in figure quality, and I am super impressed. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed Bionicle Week, and stay tuned as there are other things to uh, do with Bionicle in the future, especially when the journey continues and new enemies will emerge in August 2015. It's a long ways away, so there probably will be a couple of Bionicle videos as LEGO sent out this nice little... Uh, catalog story guide thing with the Lego magazine this month and inside of it they state that there is a special Tahu build and the instructions were just posted so stay tuned for a video on that later on um, I did not have time to cover that in this week anyways I'm glad you all enjoyed it stay tuned for more Bionicle content here on Sound Out 12 and be sure to check out HeroTaka.com for all your Bionicle news and more until next to Sound saying Goodbye.